Okay, we're gonna do a little window flashing here. Um, got a very standard, standard project. And um, so we're gonna just do a standard detail for like a two by six wall with just really regular sheathing on it. And um, so before we get started, let's just give you some contact information in case you need to or desire to get a hold of me for any reason. So you can just pause here as my email address, my website, the whole channel, and even a phone number. So back to what we were about to start. So what I have here is something that probably has got me right on. But all I really want is quick, easy line work. Um, I mean, all this stuff, there's really nothing to it. But to get yourself out of a little trouble, with anything that had to do with um, copywriting. In this case, we're not talking about intellectual material rights here. Um, this is a standard flashing detail, so I'm not stealing anybody's intellectual property. It's not a floor plan I'm tracing. It's nothing like that. This is just a very standard flashing detail. And so all I'm gonna do is Take a snapshot off it, which I've done. So I've got that. So I'll save it. Um, and let's save it to, let's go to thumbnails. Um, in my thumbnails, I do not have standard details. So put it in here. Whoop, moved on me. There we go. And let's give her a name. And we're just going to call it standard two by six wall of window flashing. And done, just using some abbreviation there. Hit save. Now I've got it. And I've got it in PNG form so I can bring it right into AutoCAD and trace it. And I'll be one of these lines. I don't care about any of this text, none of that stuff. Um, in fact, one of these was wrong. You guys don't call out either, but this is a modified I. I've seen it called a modified H. It's obviously an I with the longer portion on the tops. Narrow inside. Can it kind of resemble an H? Yeah. If you took this, put it in the middle of that up. Um, I don't know. Maybe. It started out as a modified H when it was first named. I don't know, but it's an I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I need a really standard detail starter. So I'm going to go to my detail template, open it. And now um, let's just go to a layer for images. And I probably don't have one. So I'm going to use this XREF1 layer, make that current, I'm going to insert, I'm going to attach, and I'm going to go to my, well, we're going to kind of go way out, um, in fact, we're just going to go here, because I need to be in my videos folder, YouTube, thumbnails, down to standard deets, PDF. I don't want that. I want all image files. There's what we're after. Open. Insertion point will be fine. I'm going to do the scale on screen as well. Because we want something that kind of makes sense in a three quarter would be nice. So if I get it to, oh, be about. Little less, little less there. Oh, that's probably too little, but we can scale it and change it. So I'm going to use the three quarter to do this one. And I'm going to erase out what's not three quarter. So I don't want that. Uh, I don't need that. And I don't need that, but I do need that. So that's getting started. Um, I don't need any 
these sizes. My layers are fine, whether I have them here or not is also fine. I like to move this guy over because if I do decide to do any shading, that is a nice piece to have. And I'm gonna move the whole thing from here to my origin. That is zero, zero in my drawing. Um, these are special symbols for structural stuff mostly. We'll be using that here. I can get rid of it. Also again, anchor bolts, choice, all kinds of stuff here. Not really what I'm after. And as long as I don't purge <clears throat> those layers right there, they're safe. Um, I could keep them if I want, so if I do, the details um, drawing does not have a whole lot of layers in it. So it's pretty simple. So here, now that I've got this started, um, I do want to turn off this guy. I don't want to snap. I don't want to even angle snaps. I just want lines. So um, I can zoom in a little bit and let's pick a layer to draw on. And we're going to go to D object for now. And I'm going to draw a line from there to there. There, there, and then end there. So there's one, and then it's just keep on going. So here's the deal with this standard type. There's a problem right here in any of these. Because I have got a slice, and then I've got a slice. And so what we want to look at is there are a ton of great products out there for dealing with this. Um, here's an article from Home Fine Home Building, but basically all I want you to see is this stretch type materials, and there are a a lot of them nowadays. Um, in fact, let's just back up. So here we go. All these different types of Beetle stretch. I think Zip has their own too. And the Zip one actually is kind of cool in how it works. Um, that's it right there, I believe. Yeah, I can see Zip. So, and you can see there's just, there's a lot. But it's the flexible, stretchy, that can stretch around that corner so we don't end up with this hole. And maybe it's a pinhole. But that's just how it starts. And um, you kind of have the same case right here. Now, this one's not so volatile because the water's going down. But just regular surface tension can draw it right back in there. So I advise not creating this little pinhole there if you can at all help it. So we're going to draw the standard detail as shown, and um, we probably will have some side notes as to um, how to improve on that so that we don't have that situation threatening our new construction at any point in time. Go there, back up here, and I can hit C enter. Close that up. Then I can go line from NEA to near that point down. And across. And I do want to encourage you to um, not um, not use any of the wording that's off of this because I think if you start using wording that somebody else wrote. Now you're looking at some copyright infringement stuff. So here I'm going to chamfer this out. Oh, I have a value set to my chamfer. So CH and hit D for distance. I'm going to set that to zero, enter, zero, enter. Now let's chamfer that. Jam for that. Very few times do I ever use 
that. In fact, I should probably, here's when you come across that, since it's coming off of a template, I'm gonna go to my blocks. I'm gonna back out one. I'm gonna open my templates evolving because they're always changing and if you're in evolving um, because of issues such as this or something new I gotta put in, there's that. But I wanna go to my templates. Here it is, right there, the 2024 upcoming year. That's how I know where I'm at. Detail template. And all I'm going to do is come in here and go. Um, so I see, make sure DWT is what's open. And I'm going to go um, chamfer. Set my distance to zero. Enter. Zero, enter. And now we can test it. So let's do a line there and a line there and chamfer these two. Hit chamfer that to there. Come up, take a look nice and close. And we got a zero. So undo, do, 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 do. Okay, my chamfer distance should be set. I'm zoomed out where. Happy and hit save and now I'm gonna close it. That is fixed. Maintenance. Always doing maintenance. So now let's take a line from here down. And this is probably perfectly vertical, but it's just not for this kind of a detail. It's not that important that the vertical portion be exact. And I believe these are perspective and not isometric. In fact, it is definitely perspective. So you can't copy one side to the other. It's going to be different. So what I'm doing is I'm typing in when I do need a snap that I get one like near. Oops. Type it right though. Any A, click to any A, because I want to stop at the line and then come over. Then I can go IMT and bring it out to here. The line from near. Oh, sometimes I can be harder to estimate there in one direction than the other, at least for me. Whatever my eye sees, yours may not. So there. Line from here, up there, zero near, there. And line from NT here first, no, I do it. NT there, and then line from NA, and NA there. And I got them. If I want to do something like hatch that out behind it, I could do that. There's lots of different ways to show that part. What I want, though, are these little guys individually. And to be honest, they're already drawn. They're right here. There's one. There's one. They're just at a different scale. So all of this line work's done. You just got to break it out as to what you want to use. So you can see that and that. That's this piece. So I've got that drawn, so I'm going to copy it. Now that I have it copied, let's move this and that. Oh, I don't want that though. So I'm going to move that and that up. Let's, let's now do a little ortho or not ortho, but polar tracking. And I'll bring that up. Enough where I can put in what notes I want. And then I need to. Now, here, this is probably more of a copy situation. So I'm going to copy and then erase. I want that. And I want that piece there. 
We'll need a vertical portion of that. I need this vertical portion here. Those. That piece there. And I do need the back. Oh, I'm doing the bottom one. Yeah, so I need the back. But I don't need those two cross pieces there. So I'm going to take them a little bit away. And, oh, it looks like I missed one, but it's not a big deal because I can make it probably hit it. There we go. So these guys trim to there. Oh, this is an erase. Oh, undo. I want to erase that one. This one's a trim. Need a line. Now I can turn my snaps on. So I need a line from the end to the end. And then trim to that. And then have it. Now we pink pieces. I do that. And then trim Come back up this Now that should be the even. So, um, no, let's move this up a bit. Or I just have to work. Um, so, this is the screen. This is the uh, yeah, screen. No. Um, this can be done in different ways depending on how your window sits. Now, sometimes it's a, a metal piece that will stick out over the top. And let's see if I can find an example of that. So, there's a couple here. Looks like Better Homes and Gardens is kind of a strange one, but this would kind of show what you could do. No, I certainly wouldn't put it only partly there. Because we're, that stretch stuff would certainly come in handy. But getting us down into the interior portion would work on a vinyl window. Where, where you have a completely sealed system in this cavity. Completely sealed. Now, a lot of these breathe, and there may be small weep holes up top. That's the case. You can't do this. It needs to come all the way out. So, um, looking at this guy, you know, we've got. Um, now I don't sure know what that note's depicting, but this is, this is, um, like the trim. And so, um, what they've got is they've got some flashing tape that's probably covering the flange, which would be kind of what we drew. And then they trimmed over it. And then this ridge cap flashing, to me, would be a much, um, much better name for that top piece. And so, or just another lap of the flashing tape because you're creating a cascade. Now, this one's not even drawn very well, unless the next, there's another, okay, so your house wrap. Well, house wrap's penetrable in many cases, um, but as long as it comes over so that this seam is not exposed at the top, as long as when you overlap to be the top over the next one down. So it'd be, you always apply, start at the bottom, work your way up. And you can see that in things like the steps. So here's a house wrap that's been cut. Modified H. There we are. So, and then installing that flash pan. But again, this is the style where you've got a penetration here. And then installing the... Um, so the flash pan behind the sill. And then on both of the, the jams here. Then installing the head flashing and then taping that cut back down. This is pretty nice because it's going over it. But again, you do have potential for leak right there. And on top, love that black stuff. Good stuff. So, encourage that. But I'm trying to do something very standard 
for those who are not going to go to the extent of getting that and are willing to risk, risk these pills. So, um, so, here now, what I want is some general notes. And there we go. So, I want to check these. See what layer I'm on. General. Okay. We're in a good place. So, um, I can just grab that, pull it up. Oop. I want to copy it from there to there. And we can call this our, um, our jam flashing. It's how to do it with a non flexible material. It's not very easy. So I think that we make that simply an option if you're going to use flexible material. So let's bring this up. Okay, let's stretch it. That's not going to be enough. I need, yeah, it wants to, yeah, see, that's just funky. Um, so let's just move this up. A little bit, um, like there. And let's try and picture what we're going to have. We're going to have a, the window, probably about here. Open over there. And this is going to come out. And this is going to come out. So I just want to come out. So there we go. So if we're looking at like this is going to come across and, and up and it would be copying that up here. Bup, 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 bup. So you could array this do a path there and there we go so be almost the opposite to here so ARC from there to there to there and then AR path, path there uh, oh yeah, there we go. Let's look a little off for a second there. I don't know if that's got enough curve in it, to be honest with you. It could probably be a little heavier. Okay, so here's the source that you can try. It doesn't always work. Try it, bring it up. Uh, it did work. All right, save changes. Okay. Hey, how do we like that? That's better. Got my last one a little high up there. So to fix that, click on this and pull your increment down a, just a, a little bit. Now, why it wants to go up, I wasn't sure. Well, see, now it's still up here. So I think my, f oh, I've got an increment arrow, but I don't have a way to control the last number. Hmm. So the items are 16 between, I mean, do I just see what happens when I make that one? Yeah, it makes it worse. So in here, um, 0.9, 
Oh, well that way off. Uh, zero. There we go. Now I got it below. Okay, that looks better. Now, what I do want to see is, okay, there is an ARR, and the array edit definitely allows you to mess with the source the right way. So I pick the source, and this is really the only way I know of to change the layer. And so if I want this to be the object thin, save changes. Now I've got a really thin line there. I'm going to copy my command. Oh, it's not going to re-edit that. My source, pick it again, pick it one more time, change it to thin, save changes. Boom. So now I can go through and I can change those that are facing me, that kind of thing. Um, so, getting our pieces here. And then we'll come through, make some proper notes, and then explain this situation. And we'll explain it in this one. So here, if you remember, this is on the extra flare. All I gotta do now is freeze that. In fact, let's lock it too. I don't want it to move. Um, so all I cared about was that line work really don't care about much of anything else. Give me what I need. Now I could use shading. Come in and get it to do what I want. So if I do hatch. Now their use of different colors. Color printing. I haven't gotten there yet. Um... So what I need here is this line is behind, because this is the first layer to go down. So I'm going to break that to there, and I'm going to break it here as well. Now when I come across these two, then this needs to become that object thin. Same on the other side. So just a break there to there, same on the other extend them out to re-meet where they came from. And you can grab both at once too. That's kind of a cool little trick. Then change this to thin. And we've got this going. So <clears throat> to me, this, this one out front, it stands out. Um, Where they're doubly lapped, is it darker? So just, this is kind of deceiving. I need to change this. But this is the one that shows up the least second and the heaviest. So we're just going to experiment with it because we can change them around once we get our first print. And so you can see how that just changed immediately. So this, I would think, is going to be the same color. And my main pieces here also would seem to be, to me, to be the same color. So I'm going to go and hatch that one. Then I'm going to hit Enter. Then I'm going to hatch that one and Enter. Then I hatch that and Enter that. And that will be the same. Enter this and this will be the same. Enter this and this and this and this would be the same. There, uh, it gets a little confusing here. Now, look at that. I think I'm going to do that one independently. Okay, now I can mess with them. So if I just bring them over, 
bring in our lightest value and put it right here, which means I also want it here. Give her a second the lightest value. Again, I really need to change this because it kind of drives me a little crazy. Second to the lightest. Let's go on that one. It's an overlap. Um, I've got this guy hidden in the background. And this is out front. Well, as is this and that. Now here, boy, I think the same as this. This seems different to me. Let's. See what happens with that. Okay, and hopefully it'll stand out okay. So what I'm gonna do, I don't need this. I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, we're gonna use the let's thing. You already know our detail and descriptions. And here I'm going to use this as a uh, standard window value flash one two five six with G. Okay, now let's look at this guy. Right? So now what I'm gonna do print, you know, previous, I think I have that. Uh proof, proof, proof. I want it to be proof for the screen. I want to use proof. No, I don't. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go for you. Not bad. Not bad. See what thing is there. And I'm gonna make that piece then. Um that's kind of like having this piece. Now we have block. Now we need to work a little bit. So um you want details evolving and demonstrations. I'm gonna just put it in here as that PDF. Save it. The reason why is now I got this. So we'll see. I'm gonna work on the side. So I can work on things lines the way like it would be. And so this line. This one, do I have to stop? Is it there? Give it a Now, I'm not so sure. Let's see on that one. Yeah, I can go on the side one because the side one's covered by the, um, so this line is covered by our geometry. So this is our silk side geometry, our flashing, and then this is our silk flashing under. So that one's under. And that's under, that's under, and from here to here is under. Those are my legs. So, I got, oop, don't in there, but I need to find my legs. Okay, and we're gonna change it to a pin. Now, I need to do the same thing. This line's constant. Part of the issue with this is it's on the scale. It's kind of the way, it's kind of off for a minute. Now, let's break this down. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that app. Definitely pretty happy with that. That's looking good. Black and white or grayscale. Not a bad looking drawing. So, <clears throat> what we need to start thinking about at this point is the other portions of our, our notes.
Oh, we got something going on here. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting closer. There we go. That's kind of strange there too. But this, oh look how it, look how it defined it. It went out and around these little guys. Give it a strange hue, but um, so let's resolve that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my flat my stuff for a moment. Um, I'm going to match properties. On that to there and here turn that off but this is not on that layer just the actual one was but if I put it on that layer um, now let's see if it'll switch and it should does one turn off why is that? See, I don't want to edit the array. When I grab both, it takes me out of that. I'm back. At, so I can go here and let's, it is on that layer. So if I have that layer off, oh, it's not off. Okay. Oh, probably because it's current. So let's go to here. Now, okay, now it's off. Now I should be able to hatch this without any issues. Okay, now it's just color choosing. So, let's move this guy up here. Need to spend some time putting in some notes. So, what I'm going to do now, over here, feel like I'm going to put out some challenges and all we is the projects are software. Um, it's time to um, totally project because it's got the account that you need to work. This is the project standard details. And that's right in there, also available. So, here, this is our um, standard. Now, let's work. Let's see if we can find what's going on. And you'll see standard no flash on the project. Okay, so here, um, notes to include. Here, I want to um, warn against pinhole leak sill to, well, it actually should be the other way around. It should be jam to sill to sill flashing. So I'm going to do that, and then on and on.
So I don't know how I'm gonna get um, this in there, but this is, uh, for some reason I didn't narrate this part and I just put in M text, expanded it out, and then I'm gonna run over and grab the text out of my OneNote the, for all the notes I'd written and just paste them into this and then um, then find a, a good text size for that um, that portion of text and once that text size is created then I've got to get it to sort of stretch to fit and move window over so you can see I've got all the text in there but it came in as a very small text size so just need to go check its properties and come up with a, a better number that I think is gonna work and that looks a little large to me and you can see how far it's traveling down the page and then I've got these spaces that are out front of the numbering which the only way to truly get rid of those is to actually get rid of the bullet, <clears throat> the numbering or bullet, either one, and just put that in there as a one dot space. That increment out front of the text for numbering and bulleting, I cannot find any setting to be able to change that distance. So that's how I see that it has to be. So here in this short spot, I'm actually just changing the title block down at the bottom to be what I need it to say. And then it'll be uh, about just repositioning the objects within so that everything looks really nice. And uh, then do little test printing and see what we like and if everything looks good then heck we're in good shape and we can call it golden so here I am putting in that plot and then I'm gonna pull that over oh I'm gonna grab the wrong thing but I pull it over um, trying to grab just a tab so we can do a comparison or that was earlier on I'm sorry so just zoom in see what we got you can see I've got just that number with a bullet or number period space and um, to me that looks pretty darn good So <clears throat> it is just a matter of saving um, for this project as well as um, saving for the, um, the, the standard details that I keep. And um, here I'm just playing with that text size a little bit more and uh, trying to make it a little more legible because the print was just a little smaller than what I'm seeing so that you can see the scale factor underneath that title was um, was the text size I was after and then just move that stuff or delete it either way and then go back to one final shot of the proof of this thing and make sure that we, we like it and if it's good then we're done so to plot overwrite it it and there we have it so that is our final product and I think it looks pretty good All right, well, it looks
looks like this window flange detail is complete with instructions. And um, I think it's pretty clear. So if anybody had any comments, love to hear them. If this was helpful, please like or subscribe or both. Again, this is Mark Farrar with Mod Square Design, and thanks for watching.